everyone. This is News Now from the Belmont Journal, and I'm your host, Mike Crowley. State Representative Dave Rogers, State Senator Will Brownsberger, and Nancy Lind, chair of the Belmont Cultural Council, have all recently announced the award of eight grants totaling $8,370 for cultural programs in Belmont during 2021. We have with us today Nancy Lind, chair of the Belmont Cultural Council, Annette Goudreau, treasurer of the same council, as well as Dari pa- Paquette, um, uh, co-chair of the Belmont Art Association, which was one of the recipients of the grants. So thank you, Nancy, Annette, and Dari for joining us today. So, so first, let me ask, Nancy, for those who don't know much about the Belmont Cultural Council, can, you, can I ask you to tell us a little bit about the council and its mission? Sure. Um, thanks for having us and giving us the opportunity to talk about our council. Uh, we're very proud of what we do. Um, so it, the, the cultural council starts with the Mass Cultural Council. And they have a wonderful program where they allot money to every single um, town and city in Massachusetts. They have some sort of uh, system by which they decide how much people get. Okay. And um, so, and then the town can do what they see fit. The, the towns interpret this in different ways. Um, but what we do is um, we have a regranting program. We, every fall, well, COVID put a monkey wrench in things, but usually every fall, um, starting in uh, early September, I think, Annette, yeah? Right. And ending in mid-October is the grant period. And it's a very simple grant. So artists, historians, um, performers, um, lecturers, um, you know, we we define um, culture and the arts very broadly. Um, But they just fill out a simple um, grant um, application and bring it in and send it in to us. And then we have guidelines by which we have determined, you know, what, what's applicable and what isn't. And, and we vote. And, um, you know, this year was a bit of an unusual year in that a lot of programs also had to have, you know, a COVID friendly um, aspect to them. So in case an in-person, they're usually in-person um, projects. Um, and in, in, in this year, that's difficult. Um, so we had a, a, some, a fewer um, applicants than normal. But luckily, um, our applicants were, um, you know, s- sort of longstanding and much beloved um, Belmont institutions. So that's great to know, Nancy. Um, Annette, can you tell us a little bit about the, the 2021 grantees and how you selected their projects? Sure, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you who they are. There, there are eight of them this year and uh, a little description of them. Um, and, and then I'll go into how we selected them. But okay. so the first is that the Belmont Art Association transforming the Belmont um, beautifying the transformer boxes project is for three transformer boxes. And Dari will talk about that some more. So I'll move on. All right. and then there's the Belmont Gallery of Art. It's a nesting. It's a bird themed public art project. There's going to be a companion group art exhibit at the Belmont Gallery of Art. And um, then Habitat. We've got two grants for Habitat Audubon. One is a, a, a for sensory friendly days. And it's really an opportunity for families with children with autism or other sensory issues to connect with nature Mm -hmm. then Belmont world films, annual international film series. It's going to be virtual. Then powers music schools, their online community outreach and the um, Dorothy and Charles Mosesian center for the arts. Uh, The funds are going to the virtual free and low cost visual and performing arts programs that they have there. And then the friends of the Benton library, it's um, for purchase of books for their lending okay. library. They are not open, but they are lending out books. That, and, that is great to know. Yeah. And what's different this year, too, is the grant amounts are much more significant in past years. Um, um, 
So, so, so Anad, are you saying that the great, that there was more funding available in prior years? Yes. Okay. Um, uh, to our shock and surprise, <laughs> we got the low, the highest grant allotment this year than in the past seven years I've been on the council. Nancy and I thought, you know, given the circumstances, we'd be lucky to get three thousand dollars total. But this, so this is the most we've ever received. And we didn't know what our allocation would be until after the deadline for the grant, which was December 15. We weren't gonna find out what our allocation was until January. So we wanted to be conservative in terms of the number of grantees because we, we weren't sure how much we could give them. Um, so very, we had many few, fewer um, grant applications than in the past. Yeah, usually, uh, sorry, Annette, but usually okay. we encourage people to apply, uh, the more the merrier. But this year we didn't do that so much because of COVID and because we didn't know how much money we were gonna have. Okay. So, um, so in prior years, we'd have, you know, maybe twice as many grantees, but a lot, we'd be giving them a few hundred dollars maximum grants. Like for example, this year, the transformer boxes transformation grant of $3,300 is the most single grant I think we've ever given. Yeah, definitely. So, so um, let me ask Derry Paquette of the, um, the Belmont Art Association about that grant. Um, you know, so, so just tell us briefly, what, what is the Transforming Belmont project? And um, you know, what's important about this project for the Belmont Art Association? The Transforming Belmont project was uh, conceived initially, I think back in the, the fall of 2019, um, I brought up this idea of applying for a grant to try to get some public art into, into Belmont. It, um, it beautifies uh, the world and it brings art out into the street so that people can enjoy it as they're driving and passing around and those who may not have time to go to a museum or a gallery. Uh, we conceived of it before COVID. And then just as our grant, uh, our art request for design proposals came out, COVID hit. And uh, the transforming Belmont phase two um, is to continue that mission of bringing public art to the community. But now it has an even uh, greater importance and meaning, I think, when we were having the boxes painted last summer, the three that we began with. But the project could not have taken place without the grant from the Cultural Council, uh, the Belmont Art Association, just a very small group. We have a, a very low annual dues um, payment, much lower than most local art associations. And that's our only source of income. We don't have a staff. It's all run by volunteers. We have no paid staff. And we would not be able to, to uh, afford it. And we're very grateful for the extra money this coming year because I was, I was shocked at how much work actually it is to paint when these boxes are enormous. Mm -hmm. There's multiple rounds of materials that need to go down in a particular order. And last year, actually, the artists spent all their grant money on just the materials. And so the, the Belmont Art Association, you know, we met, we talked, we, we gave them each 100 extra dollars per box because they basically had worked for free for many hours in the hot sun. So this year <clears throat> we can we can pay the artists some actual meaningful money. And we are in discussions depending on how many applications we get and how many boxes we identify. We might be able to, if it's allowed, um, maybe do four boxes instead of three, but mm -hmm. I don't know if we can change how we, uh, apply the money and I don't know how many applications we will okay. get um, yet this year. So that's all in discussion. We're in process of writing it up now. So, so here's a question that, that really, you know, is addressed um, I think to all of you and that's, you know, during, during a time like this, we're in a, a pandemic and a lot of people are having difficulties. Um, why is it important to contribute to art and culture in Belmont? Well, we think, we think the arts are important all the time, um, arts, arts and culture, but particularly 
during difficult times. And, you know, as, as human beings, we communicate through the arts, we connect and we share experiences through the arts, we teach and we learn through the arts. And the arts and cultural programs reflect who we are. Um, and they, they illuminate the times in which we live. It gives us a, a way to sort of um, express the human condition and, and even more so when the world is so um, kind of upside down and confusing. Um, arts play an important role. So, so Nancy and Annette, I wanted to ask you, so, so for anyone who, who may be interested in applying for a grant from, from the Belmont um, Cultural Association in the future, you know, when, when should they be thinking about, about uh, reaching out? Um, uh, what, what does, you know, what does the next funding cycle look like in terms of timing? It starts in the beginning of September when applications will be available online. And, um, you know, we can go over all the websites and so forth that people can look at to find out information. But um and the deadline would, is usually October 15 uh, until this year. But um, so they should be starting to reach out certainly before September. Okay. We, we don't know, obviously, this year how COVID will or will not affect us. Um, last year, um, as Annette said before, it was um, the, the period that you apply was, was extended <laughs> and delayed. Um, so if they keep watching the Mass Cultural Council website, and we'll try to keep it up on the town website, um, you know, hopefully we'll know something in the summer. All right. Well, that sounds great. And I'd like to thank all of you, Nancy, Annette, and Jerry, for joining us today. Um, and, and I hope that we'll be talking with you again in the future. Great, great. Well, I just wanted to say one thing. It's sure. short, I promise. Sure. Um, that, that three years ago, the Belmont Cultural Council moved from being a reimbursement-based grant mm -hmm. to a direct payment grant. Now, not all of the local cultural councils are direct payment grants. This really helped our grantees in that last year they got their money in February, um, before, you know, COVID closed the world, you know, changed the world for us. So they had their funds available to them, even if their grant got canceled or postponed, um, they could have it taken place. Um, and also, the MCC reversed their requirement that a grantee with a canceled project or event, return the unspent funds to the local cultural council. So we voted uh, not to request the money back for grants that were canceled last year. Okay, well, that, that is good to know. And thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us.